Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Vogue Show. Yes, it's a show with a Vogue in it. Uh, hello, and welcome to the 11th of May 2020. I am Richard Vobes in a back room in Worthing at the foot of the South Downs, the edge of the English Channel, and uh, I'm a bit chilly actually uh, today. <laughs> A bit, uh, a bit chilly, willy. Uh, oh, instead a naughty word. Uh, good evening to Audrey Forbes Hamilton. Lovely to see you. Hello to the lovely Julia and to Barry Stevens, to Audrey, Audrey, to Laura Riddle, um, to Ed Loud, to Andy Dalgleish, Glastonbury, Glastonbury, Gabriel. Um, to Laura Riddle. I've said that. I may have said Ernie Tallyho. Uh, we may be looking. At the end of September, for our first reenactment this year, fingers crossed. I'm looking forward to your first reenactment. It will be absolutely stunning and fantastic, and I can't wait to see you in your blues. Uh, I nearly said blues and twos, but I didn't mean that at all, did I? Silly man. Yeah, he's a silly man, all right. Hello to Jeff Kellison, all the way from America, driving away. <laughs> Doing something like that. Uh, Linda Kane, good evening to you. Ron Langley, how are you? Hope you're well. Thank you for tuning in on today's show. Andrew Norris, it's lovely to see you. What ho, Andrew Norris, I um, think you're back in London. In London, in London. What am I saying? In London, in London. No, not in London. In jolly old, um, uh, sorry. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What did you say? I said sorry, sorry. It's sorry, sorry night. Everything is looking bright. Then the vobes went shite. Sorry, sorry night. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm in uh, a less of a, or a less of a uh, assertive and serious mood tonight. Uh, we have a good lineup of videos. Has made me smile, smile a while, and while you smile, another smiles, and soon there's miles and miles of smiles, and life's worthwhile because you smiled. Yes, that's the kind of attitude I'm in tonight. I've been, uh, just before setting up the show, and well, whilst I was setting up the show and all that kind of stuff, one sitting in here waiting for the time to tick to 8 o'clock, eight o'clock going, now, oh, what shall I do? What shall I do? And um, I just happened to catch my eye, oh, it didn't half hurt, uh, on YouTube. And I think you can sue them if that happens, actually. Anyway, the point being is I watched some of these, um, have you seen these orchestral, orchestral flash mobs? Starts off in a street in, I don't know, Copenhagen or somewhere, and there's just like this one bloke with a bass drum, or not a bass drum, what's that big double bass thing that's got strings on it with a double bass? There you go, that'll be it. And um, what happens was that this little girl puts some money in a, in a hat and he starts playing, and then somebody else comes in and somebody else comes in and half a dozen, till eventually there's this whole orchestra and people are milling around going, What? There was a brilliant one that did Star Wars. I don't know if you've seen that. And it just starts off with this trumpeteer and this bloke who gets on a box and starts conducting this solo trumpeteer. And he's... And then suddenly from balconies around, you get a whole load of other people doing it. It's absolutely an amazing one. Um, and it does, what it, it's, it's quite emotional because you see all these people completely surprised... And it brought tears to my... I don't know what's happened to me as I've got older. I've got more passionate. More passion. No, stop mugging about. Oh, no, matron, please. Yeah, a bit more passionate. Uh, I think I've opened the floodgates. Maybe it's doing this show with all you lovely people out there that is that has made me sort of embrace and show my my emotional side. There was another one doing the Mission Impossible theme, which I thought was fantastic with these violinists. Amazing. They put up all this makeup and what have you. Um, so that was great. Uh, not heard of Flash Bob says that you've got to put if you put, I don't know, put in um, something like um, Ode to Joy Flash Mob or Mission Impossible flash mob into YouTube. Don't do it now. Don't do it now. Do it after the show. We'll remind you at the end. Uh, so that will be all right. Uh, yeah, so Turbo Stream, not out of that. Uh, Paul Smith, good evening to you. Um, I'm not... I'm enough to make anyone cry. Well, that's very true, Ed Loud. Very, very true. Um, actually, I hope... Just, sorry. <laughs> a bit, it's a bit chilly. Have you noticed that the weather has... Uh, I meant to put my jumper on before I started the show. Um, have you noticed that the weather has got uh, a bit blowy? It was blowy today. I did the the great thing about the weather today, and you'll see it in tomorrow's video, is 
that I was able to put on my Harris Tweed jacket, which I haven't been able to put on because it's been so hot. I get so hot in my Harris Tweed jacket. Uh, but I was able to shove it on. So just bear with me whilst I bang my jumper on. There we go. Ah, it's a bit, sorry about it. Anyway, oh, I've got my arm stuck. Um, as I say, we do have... Um, I must have washed this because it's a bit tight. There we are, that's better. Whew. Marvellous. Now, so, um, sorry about that. Uh, we do have a nice lineup of, um, of videos. Not least. Now, I hope no one's going to be slightly somewhat un un scared because we do have Barry's Cupboard of Curiosity. Um, and uh, that is going to be a bit spooky. It's a bit off the beaten track in our normal videos, but I love it. I love it. He's got some very fascinating things in his cupboard of curiosity, which is going to be superb. Uh, Rick Gordon. Hello to you, Rick Gordon from Cambridgeshire. Rick Gordon is another one who features in our show tonight. It's very exciting. So don't go away. Whatever you've got planned, stay with us. Stay up there. Stay up there. On the screen. Stay up there. That's what we like. Now, if you're enjoying the show so far, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Uh, Josephine says, I'm fashionably late. That's all right, Josephine. But please, will you shut the door after you? There's an awful draft. I've just had to put my jumper on. Uh, Barry Stevens says, hi, Rick and Rita. Oh, hi, Rick and Rita. That's like they like a little double act. It's the Rick and Rita show. Rick and Rita, nothing neater than Rick and Rita. You can greet her. Rick and Rita, think of a rhyme quick. I can't think of one, so it'll peter out, as it usually does. Um, lovely uh, Julia says, is Kevin out there tonight? Kevin! Uh, yeah, he should be in there because um, we've got a video of his tonight. Hello, Richard. Kevin here. What are you doing down there, Kevin? I'm just mending the steps. Mending the steps? Yeah, I'm just mending the steps for you. Uh, let's hope Kevin is out there. Uh, Turbo Stream says, uh, I might be light on the vids for a few days. Not happy with today's recording. Oh, yes. You had a bit of out-of-focus stuff, did you not? But it's a shame because we do have a video from the lovely Adrian, Further Depths into Coventry. And I've already seen it, and he mentions that Coventry used to be a bit of a dump in the centre. I'd like to see a picture of what it used to be, um, sort of from the 1920s. I would like to know if it is a bit of a dump. Uh, Jeff Kellison says, Rick and Rita, you can breed her. <laughs> I don't think that's how the song goes. Rick and Rita, you can breed her. Come and meet her, Rick and Rita. She's a cheater, he's a beaver. Rick and Rita. <claps> On tonight. Da dun dun ting. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <clears throat> um, it's funny, isn't it? Some days I'm, I'm on, some days I'm off. Uh, John Richardson, hello to you. Hey up, bread maker superman. Hey, never mind that. Where's Kevin? Because Kevin has been making bread. I hope he's out there. Somebody give him a ring. Tell him he should be on listening to the show. I want to find out more about how Kevin's bread has gone. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, the Veg Grower podcaster. Nice to see him. There's certainly a nip in the air. That's true. Um, and just to remind you, Mr. Veg Grower, Richard Suggett, is doing a 24-hour show. When he said that to me, I thought, oh, my goodness. I know people do do these 24-hour shows, and you'd think that I'd be reasonably OK at that because I never shut my gob. However, 24 hours, oh, my God. Yeah. Think what kind of zany nonsense if I was to do a 24-hour show. Now, don't even think about suggesting it. He's doing it in aid of charity. He's got three top charities involved. So on Friday, on Facebook, on the uh, on the Veg Grower podcast channel, do check him out. So that, that would be fantastic. Barry sees, says, what have I started? Barry, I want to look inside everybody's closet. And see what's in their closet of curiosity. What have you got lurking away? Have you got skellywags in your cupboard? Any of them hanging with necks of Kimbo? Can you get necks of Kimbo? I don't think you can. Uh, Turbo Stream, Birmingham, not Coventry. Is that what I said? Coventry? Did I say Coventry? Sorry, I, I thought I was sent to Coventry. I was sent to Coventry to observe Birmingham from uh, the top of the uh, bombed. Uh, whatever it was, Cathedral, yes. Ed Loud says, Richard, you do 90 minutes quite often, that over 22 and a half hours, 
Uh, just the straw that breaks the camel's back. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes, you know, I'm a bit wibbly wobbly, but hey, who knows? Uh, Mike Dixon. Hello, Bella. Hello, Mike Dixon. I'm just working on my Mike Dixon impersonation. Hello, Mike Dixon here with Bella. I just thought I'd share that with you. Yeah, we've been out doing our mental health, our, our one hour uh, obligatory walk. Uh, it's Mike Dixon. Um, it's not very good, but I'm working on it. I like to try and, you know, see if I can get them. Kevin Rambles is here. Hello, Kevin. Uh, he says, I've arrived. Sorry, I'm late. My daughter pulled up outside and um, my house is at 1950. Oh, what a shame. Uh, I hope you invited her in so that she could watch the show and fed her some bread. Here, yeah, love. Have some bread. I'm hoping that we talk to Kevin a bit later on in the show uh, about his bread making, but not quite yet because we're going to have a video first of all. Um, and also, I'm rather hoping that maybe a bit later on, um, because we have old, what's his face from Croatia, Andrew Norris. <laughs> I couldn't remember his name then. Sorry, Andrew. Um, I hope that, because I know it doesn't cost you anything to ring in, it would be nice to have a, a chimwag with you. Um, not least because I want to know it's your village and your apple trees. We're going to see all of this in the video, but I don't want to give too much away uh, because it's fantastic. But I've got a question about your um, apple tree. Uh, so uh, that might be good. Um, and Linda Kane, don't start him off. Mark Selwood. Hi, everybody. Hope everyone's clear of the rules. Yes, the rules are you pay attention. I play videos. We got it. Marvellous. Be like a pinball game. I play the videos, and if I can knock any of you down, then that's a shame, because you won't be making them. Hello! Um, no, that's not right. Um, Mark Selwood says, What rubbish Mike Dixon impression? Where's Croser when you need him? At the moment, he's not here, so let's not rock the boat, shall we? Please. Uh, Josephine says, She doesn't know the show is on at eight. Doesn't she know? Who doesn't who know? Oh, yes, doesn't your daughter know? That's very true. Um, so that would be good. Kevin Rambles. Hi, Barry. Hi, Kevin. Hi, everyone. Right. Let's let's before we open the phone lines, let's uh, do a video, first of all. And let's get um, into the video box. Oh, hello. Doll, says uh, the lovely Julia. Uh, Kevin, lovely to have a visitor, let alone your own daughter. But poof, gaff timing, gar timing, gaff timing. Some timing. Some enchanted timing. I went to the video box. Oh, I pressed the button. And nothing happened. Why is that? It never bloody happens. Can we try that again? Is the video... Is the, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hang on. I've got to get over here to have a look in the video box and see if it's actually been switched. Or, oh. Eric, have you been locking the video box again? That's right, sir. I locked the video box because I didn't think you needed it. Well, I do need it. Not after yesterday's show, sir. Yesterday's show was an exception. It was just something the Prime Minister was talking about. I know that, sir. I've got the... Give me the key. Thank you. I've got... That's not the key. That's a piece of mime. Mime putty. Nobody wants any mime putty. I want the proper key. <laughs> the proper key is the proper tea of Monsieur Le Verbez. Anyway, uh, so that's all good. Right. Um, what should we do? Shall we start with... Um... Oh, there's a big choice here. I think we should start with Cat Weasel. Don't you? The old Covid hair hairstyles. Shall we start with Cat Weasel? I do. Do you remember Cat Weasel? Da 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 Yes, Monsieur Le Norris. Is he? Are you still there? Are you still there, Andrew? Because <laughs> I want to know: Are you still out there before we show your wonderful hairstyle later on in the video? By the way, ladies and gentlemen, this isn't a spoiler, but he does put a hat on. But we do get this wonderful um, array of hair. I haven't seen, <laughs> I haven't seen hair like it. Um, it's. Uh, do you remember the cartoon, The Hair Bear Bunch? That was a good cartoon. Used to love that. Um, I can't remember their names, but my was it my kids used to watch it or was it me? Uh, yes, I'm here. Oh, he's had a haircut. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> my giddy aunt. Well, let's have a look at what how Cat Weasel used to look. If they were to revive him, who was the bloke? What was his name who played Cat Weasel? Old, um, oh, I know his name. I know his name. Oh, so fan. Uh, anyway, <laughs> this, sorry, I, 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 I'm being mean, Andrew, and I really don't mean it. Um, but anyway, let's go over to Croatia and get our uh, uh, Croatian. Yes, Jeffrey, uh, uh, Jeffrey ba Balam, Jeffrey Balam, somebody like that. Yes, there we go. Here we go. Hello, Roadsters. It's Thursday, the 30th of April, and I've come back to the village for the first time in about five weeks. I've managed to get permission to leave the city, and I've come to the village, and there's all this grass to cut, but the smell is intoxicating. As expected, the garden is a bit of a mess. This is our vegetable plot. We're planning to give it a rest this year, but uh, if I can't get to England, I might uh, grow a few things. And over here, this is supposed to be our raspberries. Here's rhubarb. I must have removed these. And over here is the asparagus. Now our neighbours were able to pick a few pieces, but there wasn't much this year. And I've just picked a few. And this behind me is our magic apple tree. It's magic because it's still surviving despite being struck by lightning. And I see, unfortunately, that uh, over the winter it lost another branch. Great shame. And this is the new orchard, as it was one that we planted ourselves about Again, okay, about five, six years ago. A bit vulnerable to deer. But uh, still looking good. Oh, we have some blossom. This is our Japanese maple. And over here is my little wood of horse chestnuts. And here's one I prepared earlier about five years ago. This horse chestnut from a seed. Fortunately the deer got to it so we have three trunks. But it's doing pretty well. And here I just spotted our first orchid of the year. An early purple orchid. So my first task is to cut the grass in the front garden. There we go, one immediately feels better. So that's it for today, 30th of April, Thursday. That's my work done. There you go. That was Cat Weasel, who changed at the end to Benny from Crossroads. Oh no, no, that was mean. That, that was mean. Brilliant, brilliant. It, give us a ring if you can, uh, Andrew, if, if you're able to. Um, because I'd love to ask, it wasn't the apple tree, I made a mistake, it was the conquer tree. I wanted to ask you about your tree, you said had two, um, two trunks, and I'm guessing that that's what came from one seed, because one of the oak trees that we've got has the same issue, and it's kind of like a stunted tree, but it's got two trunks, and I wanted to ask you about that. Um, but only, only if you can. I know I've been mean to you now, so you probably won't call. Um, but absolutely fantastic. Uh, it was lovely to see the conquer trees. And I saw that one of those trees also had a bit of uh, brown on there. And um, over here, we the trees suffer from... Oh, I've forgotten the name of it now. Julia knows. Um, what do you call that? Uh, that uh, canker. Canker disease or the rust or whatever it is. And um, that's a shame. And I just wondered if that is actually just in our country or if that is uh, worldwide and um, whether it is the same in uh, Croatia. But um, uh, but otherwise, very nice. Uh, I'm glad that your neighbours managed to uh, go and rob you of your vegetables, which was a bit of a shame. Uh, but there we are. Anyway, everybody else enjoyed that nice video. Wonderful video. Linda Kane, fantastic. Kevin's Ramble says, excellent, Andrew. Thanks for sharing. Mr. Connell, I'm eating McVitie's Orange Club. Oh, by the way. Oh, well, that's uh, 
that's okay. You can do that. We don't mind. Uh, lovely video. Um, what a lovely grand Josephine. So there we are. UK conkers suffer from... Oh, leaf minor moth. Is it just in the UK or are they... Uh, is it abroad? That's one of the questions I was going to ask. Um, Monsieur Le Norris. Um if he's still there. Yes, baby chestnuts have canker. I'm hoping to diminish it by removing and burning the leaves after they fall. Oh, yeah. Now, it's funny because um, I imagine that the trees that Julia and I planted last year must be must be quite... Well, not obviously tree size. That would be ridiculous. But they must be quite... Um, big now um let me just get back into the studio mode uh and put the phone number back on the screen there we go which is uh the number so uh, yeah if you're there andrew give us a call uh no rush if you're busy oh seven nine three four seven four six seven nine oh is the number now you've got a number of these you've been making a whole little series back into um the since you went back to the village i can't remember how long you'd been over there it's 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 fascinating. Do people, um, do they forget? What do, they, what do the locals do about cutting their hair, talking uh, a bit more seriously? What do they do? Do they, um, they presumably they just go out with the old uh, sheep shears, do they? Anyway, uh, all good stuff. Fantastic video. Diane says trees develop multiple trunks when they're coppiced, eaten by an animal or partially harvested by people. Oh, right. Oh, they when they're coppiced, yeah. Um, you see, what happened with our little oak tree when I when I planted the oak? I planted the oaks. I'm just trying to think back what happened. And that's right. I wasn't sure that anything was happening. I put the acorns in and they sat up here. I don't know if people remember. They sat up here for ages and ages and ages. And then the spring came and I thought, nothing has happened. I dug one up. And it started to have come out, you know, the little root, the, 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 I don't know what you call it now, the little, I used to know the name of it, the little sort of what's the name root used to come out. And it, and I thought, oh gosh. And I tried to cram it back in the pot without doing anything. And I didn't touch the other one or the other two, which however many we had to start with. And then the other two grew up quite quickly. And this one grew, but it grew with two um, trunks. So I, I I think that somehow disturbing it, but it's still got life, but it's sort of diminutive. That's that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, Josephine says it was too windy to make a video for me today with a mere iPhone 7. Oh, what a shame. Yes, it was. Um, we've got a call here. Let's find out who that is. Um, yeah, it was a bit windy and, and it's difficult. Hello, caller to the Vogue show. What ho, Richard? What ho? It's your creation correspondent. Oh, I'm, I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased you rang. It's nice. To... Yeah. Are you enjoying the show? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry, let me switch off the phone. Sorry, I'm... there are two things happening here. Oh, right. Have you, um, have you got it on in front of you? Uh, visually, yes, but yeah. we're trying to play a game of Yahtzee with Sid in England. Oh, right. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've just looked at the screen. Of course, I've got your favourite jumper on at the moment. Absolutely, yes. Um, I j <laughs> I've just put it on because I was cold. I saw you put it on and I, my heart sank when I saw it. But oh, did it? Cold. What, when I put it on? Yeah. Hang on. i tell you what, just for you then, as your heart sank, <laughs> I will take it off. It's all right. I will take it off. Just be bear with me because I can't hear you now. All right. You can probably see me stripping off. Uh, actually, the screen is frozen, so... Um, oh, it's frozen. It's hard at the moment, yeah, but... Um, oh, no, no. OK, I see it, but I need to wind it forward a little bit. OK, I'll wait till you've wound okay. it forward. Yeah, I've done that. I wish I had a match now, or a lighter. <laughs> I could burn the sink. I know you hate it, don't you? Well, it's very... Oh, I see you taking it off. Yeah, yeah. bravo, yeah. bravo. Oh well, actually, I've just hang on, hang on a minute. I've got an, I've got an old um, an old jumper over here. I'll just put something else on. Is that because it's all right? Is, is that all right? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I just yes. hope you know. Hang on, I've got to take the I've got to take the headphones off. All right. Sure. Oh, it's no, no, so nice to have you back, by the way. Oh, yeah, take well, glasses I had off, ten very good days in the village, and I made five films, one every 
second day. So I shall send you one, one a day to post. You are. And they're all of uh, different themes, but, you know, connected with what I was doing and yes. what I was observing. That's right, yeah. <laughs> I'm better now. There we are. It's much better. So uh, do tell me um, yeah. about the, uh, the, 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 the trees that you've got. They're, they're conker trees, aren't they? They are conker trees, yes. But um, the, the one that I showed you, which is an old one, the, the deer got to it when it was very young. And so, oh, oh my word. What? <laughs> Where did we get that from? What? Oh, well, the jumper. The new jumper. Uh, yeah. I got it from the, the new outlet store, the, uh, the Norris store that we've got here. <laughs> They've got they've I got want one. comedy. I want one. You want one? Yeah. I'm going to send you this. Okay. I'm going well, to. Well, I'll come and pick it up. I'll come and pick it up next time I come over. Well, I can send it to. I was going to send it to you so you could make a video in Croatia with it. <laughs> <laughs> I know you uh, hated it. Was it? Now I have to admit this wasn't my idea. I think Kevin and um, Jeff uh, couched this up between them. They knew you hated my jumper, and they said, "Wouldn't brilliant, it be great brilliant. if you were to wear one that says Andrew Norris?" So uh, we uh, we contrived to do it, and uh, that is fantastic. I am flattered, really. <laughs> Look at that! Hang on. Right, let me take the headphones off for a minute, so you get the full the full effect. Full impact. We tried yeah, to match yeah. the colour, um, and we. We did, we did look at a different one, and we tried uh, different designs, but I wanted it to be so legible the minute you, you saw it. I'm so it's pleased a, you saw it when we did it. Face. Yeah, it's a great pipe face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. That's brilliant. Uh, That's brilliant. We do love you, yeah. you know. We love having oh. you. Yeah, I love being there. Oh, I wish you... I could be there more often. Yes, uh, yeah, that's but, it. Um, leave leave anyway, Croatia. Going back, to the, going back to the chestnuts, the, the deer got to it, so it grew three trunks. It grew three trunks. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. so, what did the deer do to it then? It just well, nibbled they, they at the nibbled, nibbled the, uh, the you know the when it was a buds when it was oh, very young. Oh right, but it and still the, survived. It did still survived. Yeah, yeah. And I've got uh, four more planted at the other end near the magic apple tree, and I noticed on Friday, Thursday, Friday, that the deer had been and nibbled off the leaves of three of them. Oh. Um, a bit disappointed about that, but I still have all these little ones to plant out, so I will plant them out, but make sure that there is uh, netting around them. I was going to say, what what sort of protection can you do? Because you're not going to be there all the time with your 12 bore shotgun ready no, to. No, other than tying Zorro up there and leaving him there overnight. <laughs> not much, because. Because, you know, the leaves, they, they spread out, they're very big. Yes. And uh, although the trunk might be very small, you, you end up having a big circle of netting around it. Yes. Um, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll find some way around it, but uh, they're beautiful trees. I, I, I love the shape of them. They are. The, we, we, uh, Julia and I are growing, so, well, they're at her place. I haven't seen them for a while. Oh, but, yes, yes. Um, she tells me that they're reasonably big now because um, okay, she good. did send me a photo... Oh, a while ago, just mm. before, well, before the lockdown, or, or, or was it, I think, yeah, I think I popped round there before the lockdown, and they had no leaves at all, and she's told me now that they're all in broad, you know, all the leaves have come yes, out of the yeah. buds, because we, that's right, we looked at the sticky buds. Yes, they are. And um, yeah, I'm very delectable. Because I said to her, have they died? And then she said, no, you idiot, <laughs> it's winter, isn't it? They've dropped their, and I said, oh, because I don't, I they're in her garden, and I, I don't yes. get to see them. I can't have them in my garden. Somebody will nick them, uh, you know, because it's open to the road and what have you, and they can't go right, in the back garden because yeah. it's full of wood, full of logs. I'll end up burning them. Um, <laughs> looks like it looks like we've got orders for um, the the new Andrew Norris sweatshirt. It's uh, apparently it's very fashionable. Um, I, I can I can see see shops opening in High Street. Th th I think that the uh, the Norris Outfitters uh, will be uh, up and down the countryside <laughs> now, <laughs> along with the with the beard and and the big hair. Although, yeah, of course, you've just had a haircut. Hair now. Yeah. You also get if you buy three. Apparently, if you buy three of these sweatshirts, you get yes. a, a, a free Zorro. <laughs> <laughs> It's a promotion they're doing at the moment. You get this. Uh, Fantastic! It's, 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 you it's should a smaller version with four arms. Yes, that's it. <laughs>
Because the next run is we want to get uh, a little, for the winter, I think we'll have to get a little dog coat with Zorro yeah. on it. Uh, oh, yes, you'd like that. Like, with a mask. With, mask with a mask, the yes. The mask <laughs> of Zorro. Yeah. Oh, that would be so funny. Uh, Brilliant. Uh, he's looking at me now. Is he? Saying, where is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want it now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I would, I would say thank you to everyone who made such nice comments about my film there are more coming and i hope you'll find them as interesting yes they're all slightly different but uh, uh all about the village and um, i'll be going back next week we don't need to apply for permission now that law has been or that rule has been changed oh thank god for that yeah yeah how far is the village from from zagreb 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 um if if yes is driving it's an hour if i'm driving it's an hour and a half Oh, you drive slowly, then, do you? Yeah, I, I'm a, I mean, I passed my test many, many years ago, but I only got my first car back in August. I resisted it all these years, but now I have a car. Wow. Um, I'm driving very slowly. Yeah. yeah. You, it's, but you've got to be careful with those BMWs that you don't, uh, you know, get into. Once you get <laughs> into wish, fourth yeah. gear, you know, it's they go a bit faster. <laughs> I'd never get above third gear. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, it's a joy yes. to talk to you, and I'm so yeah. pleased that you uh, enjoyed yeah. our little ruse. Oh, I did, I did, and, and the sweatshirt's fantastic, really. Oh, I will. It will really. be. I'll I'm... have to get your address off you so I can mail it to you. All oh, right. If, if when you're not wearing it, you could always hang it up behind you somewhere. I will. I'll do that. <laughs> I'll hang it okay. up in the studio. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. All right, Richard. Good to good to hear you. Thanks for your support and. Uh, and hi to everyone else out there. So catch you later. Yeah, take care. Okay, Richard. All Cheers, the best. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Ah, <laughs> oh, there we go. The uh, Andrew, Andrew Norris, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Andrew Norris. That was uh, that was marvellous. That was absolutely <laughs> marvellous. Uh, so thank you very much, everybody, who made that uh, possible. It was all good fun. Uh, I think it's time for another video. I think so. Uh, <laughs> as Julia says, thank you for calling in. Uh, absolutely. Let's go to the video box and see who's there. <laughs> so, uh, yes, shall we... Um, Rick Gordon. Rick Gordon. Not Dick Gordon, special agent, but Rick Gordon, our agent, up there in Cambridge, Cambridgeshire, if I can say the words. He's been out and about to take us to a very interesting location to do with VE Day. So, uh, without further ado, V shall go and see what it's all about. Hello, everyone. It's Rick again here. Um, so, I'm just heading just outside the village. And I thought we'd um, have a look at something today which fits in with the VE Day celebrations. So here we are at the what is now a memorial to the crews and um, personnel that served at Steeple Morden Airfield during the Second World War. Steeple Morden was constructed or construction began in 1939 and it opened the following year in 1940 and initially it was used as a training base for crews for Wellington bombers. In 1942 the airfield was handed over to the US Air Force and it was at that time that three concrete runways were built together with perimeter roads and access roads and hard stands. The first US crews to arrive were a photographic unit that were headed up by Elliot Roosevelt, who was the son of the US president. It soon became a fighter base with squadrons of Thunderbolts and Mustangs. It remained operational until the end of the war when it was gradually dismantled and returned to farmland as we see it today. So this track is on the line of the original main runway and the planes were coming over those trees there, over the church which is just beyond the trees. The main runway would then head off 
across what is now this field, diagonally across the field. So I'm now on the very southern perimeter of the airfield and um, it's bounded by the Roman road that runs through here. It's a trackway. Um, but this section of it, you can see probably behind me, um, is concrete. And this is the original concrete taxiways and, and uh, access ways. And if we walk down here a little way, um, you can see the track actually curves round. As I walk past it, you'll see it, it'll curve round to what is my left and actually it doesn't go anywhere it just goes into the field so that would indicate that it is the original track um, and also just down here to the to my left is some brickwork which is kind of half buried in the ground um, and this spot here was approximately where the bomb store was according to maps so it's quite possible that that brickwork there um, is remains of the old bomb store. So that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this very short tour of RAF Steeple Morden and uh, the, the, the few bits that remain. I'm going to finish my walk and make my way home. Thanks a lot. Bye for now. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? How about that? Absolutely uh, fantastic. If I move that way, there we are. Uh, Andrew Norris's uh, his shirt, jumper, sweatshirt, sweatshirt. Uh, take it off, says uh, Kevin. Take it off. Keep it clean. Righto, Dad. Righto. Righto, Dad. Brilliant. Thank you, Rick. Very interesting. When I first saw your video... <laughs> I thought, what's behind that wall is the rest of the aircraft behind the wall with its nose and propellers all the way through it. But fascinating. I love I loved, um, the fact that uh, it's not been built on, for one thing, and that some of the original buildings are there and, of course, the runway, because you can, you can imagine uh, the aeroplanes just taking off. I remember, oh, years ago, when I was running uh, the Vogue show as a podcast, I went to... Uh, Tangmere, RAF Tangmere, which is similar sort of thing, but it uh, was down there near Chichester. And I went in the evening with some so-called ghost hunters. And uh, they one of them reckoned that uh, they had uh, seen or heard or something to do with the aeroplanes taking off. But we went at night with them and nothing was, of course, whenever, whenever I go and poke my microphone around, there was nothing there. But it was a fascinating thing. Somewhere I've got the recording. I'll have to look it out. Anyway, there we go. That was all very good. Um, I'm loving this, says uh, uh, Glastonbury Gabriel. It's, a, yeah, fascinating and interesting place. Uh, Linda Kane says that was interesting. Ed Loud says, wow, informative. Thank you so much. Really interesting. There we are. Well done, Rick. We want more, clearly. <laughs> we want more. It's interesting when it's sort of not in this area, you know, I mean, Glastonbury is over. I mean, Gabriel's over in Glastonbury and uh, Robert Croser is up, up in, in um, Cumbria and you're our man in Cambridgeshire. It's it's great to have the have these. It's a bit like the BBC, isn't it? Only it's the VBC. That's it. Tonight on VBC One, we go nationwide <laughs> with Michael Barrett. Da -da 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 Let's find out who's calling into the Vogues. Hello, caller. Troubles calling. I thought it would be you. Hello, Dad. I've taken Hello. off. I have taken it off and I've hung it up. I'm keeping it nice and clean. Oh, I can see that. Well done, son. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> so was that all right? Did that go to plan? That went brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it was, you know, to be honest, it was it was Jeff's idea in the first place. Yeah, please be honest. Um, oh, well, I'll, I'll be honest. It was Jeff's idea in the first place. Nothing to do with me at all. But I just helped you along a little bit with trying to get Andrew to, to be on the show tonight and or watch the show, but then ring in. 
Mm. And, and but it went it went so well. <laughs> <laughs> I loved the bit when he said, "I hate it, I hate yeah. it." Look at him, which just naturally led me into. Oh, all right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll take it off. And it just, oh, just so happens I've got an old ropey thing here. <laughs> it couldn't, it, it couldn't, you know, the discussions that you and I have had this and it couldn't have worked out better. It couldn't have worked out better. Fantastic. No, so that's no, it brilliant. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. So how are you? What are you up to? Yeah, I'm cool. I'm all right. Oh, Thank yeah. You You've been baking bread. Anything I can do, he says, I can do <laughs> <Yeah>. better. <laughs> Ladies. Well, I had a go at uh, I had a go at making some sourdough. Yeah, that was an absolute disaster. I could have sunk a battleship. It was so heavy. Oh, <laughs> I know, I know, isn't it? First attempts, so though, they do go a bit wonky, bonky, like Absolutely. the wonky, like the wonky donkey. I don't know if you know the the story of the wonky donkey. Never heard of it. No, <laughs> so no. probably quite. But I, wise. I, but I was actually I was actually given a bread making machine. Yeah, and I thought right. Got up this morning. I'm going to make. I'm going to make a loaf of bread, nice wholemeal loaf of bread. So I got all the stuff into the. Um, uh, there's. My, oh look, there's my loaf of bread. I know. I thought. <laughs> I thought the viewer. I thought the little yes. the viewer sitting on on his own would yep. appreciate seeing your loaf. My of bread. loaf of bread. Yeah. Well, I got all the ingredients into this bread making machine. Got it all sorted out. It was all ready to go. Plugged it in. Sort of switched it all on, all the bits and pieces come up on the top. Pressed when I pressed start, nothing. It wouldn't work. So I thought, oh no. So I, I sent a message to Cynthia Ward to see if she might know what I've done wrong. But no, I followed all the instructions as it should be. So then I decided, right, I'm going to take all the ingredients out, put them into a mixing bowl. Cynthia sent me a, mess, a, a recipe, so I followed the recipe, did all the proper stuff, kneading it and everything. How long, in the oven. how long did you need it for? A total of 15 minutes. Yeah, OK. Ten, ten minutes first and then a, a second lot of five minutes. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I did that. But I've never done a bro- loaf of bread like it for ever before. Yeah. And it's just it's brilliant. I just It tastes so nice. Another convert. You see, I mean, I was the same. I was, like, beaming. You saw how I was beaming on the show. I've made bread! I've made bread! It's, it's almost like, you know, I've struck oil. But I've made bread. I've made bread. <laughs> well, I couldn't believe it. You know, it's oh. it was just and it it just I don't know whether it's to do with the flour that's produced nowadays or or what, but it just tastes lovely. It's because you've made it yourself, and it's it, you know it's fresh ingredients, and it's not been hanging about in a shop or got any other perseverers what are the perseverers the the pers- right, yeah. what are they called the things that make things last longer percy percy pers- pers- percy thrower percy throwers it hasn't got any yeah. of the it begins with p i don't know preservation uh, gadgets um you preservatives know. preservatives <laughs> that's the word <laughs> i knew it began with a p i'll have a p please bob that's it, yeah, Mr. Holness. Mr. Holness, <laughs> yeah, who, whose name I didn't recognise the other day when uh, that's Dawn right, ran yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll have a piece. So yeah. and and so, of course, now you're a convert. You'll be um, and and, and uh, I must ask you, the, the flour, the flour, did it mm. uh, go on the floor a bit <laughs> on you a bit? <laughs> <laughs> Look, the stupid thing is, I was wearing a black jumper at the time. Oh. <laughs> Yes, it was on the floor. It was over the worktops. Oh. It was over my black jumper. It was up my sleeve. It was up my arm. Up your nose. Yeah, that, that very nearly did, actually. Oh, <laughs> wouldn't be able to tell if it was on your beard. But anyway, um, yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's fun, isn't it? You're kneading it, and then there's that expectation: is it going to work? Is it? it That's it, right. Exactly. And then when it rises, and you're going, yeah. I haven't had a rise for ages. <laughs> no, yeah. look at tell that. me. Tell me about it. <laughs> oh, bless you. We've got to get you uh, out of lockdown, haven't we? We've got to get you yeah, out of lockdown somehow. somehow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw a pigeon on the back fence this morning. That looked quite attractive. Oh, <laughs> you're a bird fancier, are you? Oh, yes. yes. I love the birds. Yeah. Oh. oh, loaf it out, mate. Loaf it yeah, out. You loaf it out. Yeah, that's uh, it. Yeah. Oh, dear. So you're a yeah. proud father of a loaf. How much is left? I've had three slices of it. I've been... <laughs> So you, uh, you don't want to use dear. it up. You don't want to use the poor little thing up too quickly. 
Well, I, no, I want to, I'm, yeah, you want to make more right. now, don't you? I've got, I've got to make, yeah, and I don't want to leave it too long so it starts going mouldy. <laughs> no, 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 well, you should be able to get through a couple <laughs> of days with it. But uh, now, of course, you'll have to uh, make one for Shelley. Your daughter? Yes, yes, yes. She's on a diet as well at the moment, so... So can she eat bread? I don't know. I've got to find out, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, she can have, um, a, she can have a slice, can't she? What about Cynthia? Yeah. She only lives down the road from you. She'd like a nice loaf. Um, a seven, I don't know, six, seven miles away. You're not far. Yeah. I well, mean, she she makes bread anyway. She's brilliant. She's much better at it than I am. Oh, no, but I'm sure she'd like to have a go at tasting your bread, seeing as she gave you the idea. Well, that's quite true, Yeah, yeah. So, so far, that she's given me um, a recipe for banana bread, so I follow that one. Oh, blimey. Uh, a, a recipe for scones. So I've, I've made two lots of scones. I've got another lot in the cupboard now. Oh, Linda Kane so, sent me some scone recipes. I haven't done those. I'm waiting for a, a miserable day. Oh, we're going to get plenty of them this week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's going to be very cold. Um, what's this? Hang on. Josephine says, Kevin's desperate to go help bird watching again. Yeah, yeah, attracting birds. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's more like it. Well, if you, <laughs> I think though, if you've got bread making skills under yeah. your belt, yeah, and um, I think that would be something that would attract the fairer sex. Well, you know, I hope it helps. You know, all these all these skills that I can develop over the next next few weeks. Yeah, it might just I'll put it on my CV. I can make bread. I can imagine you on Tinder. <laughs> Swipe, swipe the Kevin, and it says, it says, perfect with flour. I can paint your banisters. I can do your ceiling, love. I can make your bread. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Yes. What the hell's Tinder? <laughs> What's the hell's Tinder? I don't know. Well, it's a little box, and I believe if you strike a flint... You I've can... heard of one of them. Yeah, it's a Tinder box. And you can, right, apparently you can get the app. I've never quite worked it out because I assumed what it was was a gas lighter, like those little things that you go click, 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 you know, to light <laughs> the gas. I assume that's what it was, an app, like you can get an app to change the telly on your phone. But uh, <laughs> apparently that's not it. If you swipe the wrong way, the worst one to get is Grinder. apparently. I thought oh, that, is it? Yeah, I thought that was for coffee making. Oh, well. But, uh, you could, well, you could do, yes, there's loads of grinding you can do, aren't you? You could... You can grind um, wheat and you can grind um, coffee and and you can... Oh, well, let's not go there. Um, I don't want to grind your nuts too early. <laughs> I don't know if that's where you were I going. Think mine, I, think mine, mine, I think mine has disappeared. Oh, bless. <laughs> you need to have a hot oh, bath, no, mate. That's what you need. Yeah, I know, yeah. See if oh, they no, pop don't out. Do anyway. Yeah. Uh... Hang on, Richard, this is a family show. Yes, yes. <laughs> Why are you dragging me down to the pits? <laughs> it's the only way I could have, you know, you know, well, what am I like? I'm always like that, aren't I? We have a video of you on the ready on the loop to play in. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Oh, but I better, I better get off the phone quick. I think we should uh, see who is... Mo you, uh, you cut your own hair recently, didn't you? No. Oh, no. Who was it? Somebody said... I mean, I know that Ed Loud cut his hair and he cut it right <laughs> off. <laughs> yes, I did see. I did see his video. After I his thought hair somebody cut. else had said. I maybe I dreamt it. Uh, somebody else had cut their own hair. Um, I had. I had. Did, I had threatened to get some clippers and, and take mine right off. Oh right, yeah. So and, uh, and, and I had one or two people say, "No, don't do like that. You're, you look stupid." <laughs> so I want to see who looks now more like Cat Weasel than uh, you or Andrew. In the first section, it's a competition. <laughs> well, you've both got the same sort of hairdo and, and stuff, so... Um... I think I think Andrew, Andrew's from the video, before he had it cut, look, looks looks a lot thicker than mine. Um, is yours, a lot fuller. Is yours thinning out, dear? Yes, it is. <laughs> is it? Very quickly. It's terrible. Get him. Yeah. Get him whilst he's got the hair, hair, ladies. Going, and the hairline's going further back. <laughs> Get him whilst he's got some hair, ladies, or he'll end up baldy like me. And then he'll be on oh. the shelf forever. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we'll be, we'll be like two bookends then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And I've got plenty of books in between. You have. I was going to say something about that. Yeah, but you beat me to it. <laughs> nice to talk to you, Kevin. Cheers, Richard. Well, Take care, everybody. Look after yourself. And you. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.
Oh. Oops, I cut him off. There we go. Lovely uh, Kevin all there. Let's get him on the screen, shall we? Let's see what he looks like in real life at this moment in time. Get into the video box if I remember how to do it. And here is Kevin out on the first, I think, of three little segments. We're going to play in the other segments tomorrow and the day after. But this is the first of his adventures. Morning, Richard. Kevin here. Sound of rushing water. Where am I? I'm at North Mill in Midhurst. Where I'm standing on these grassy banks. When we had the floods earlier this year, I, I'm five foot nine, just over. I would have been about three feet under water. So it gives you an idea of how deep the water was when we had the floods. So I'm going to press on. I'm going to walk on up the, the river walk, or the rother walk as it's called, up towards Wolveeding. So I'll catch you later. There we are. Lovely Kevin there. Ready to take a dive. In episode two, he strips down to the waist to show off his new bodybuilding that he has been doing, just to impress the ladies, and then does 15 lengths, backwards and forwards, and a couple of dives off the weir at the back. Uh, well worth coming back for in tomorrow's show. Believe that? You believe anything. Anyway, there we are. That was the lovely Kevin. You are, of course, uh, very welcome to make your own videos of you stripping off to the waist, doing some swimming in some ice cold water, or, of course, something a bit more sedate, uh, wandering around some lovely bit of scenery or whatever it is that you enjoy doing. Uh, in the meantime, of course, uh, you can uh, give us a call on the show. I've lost my camera. <laughs> there it is. Uh, and say hello. Uh, always lovely to hear from you. 07934746790 is the number. What we need is someone to uh, write a jingle, actually. If somebody could write a jingle for me, that would be great. A little video jingle with the 07934746790. Just something like that. No more than 10 seconds would be perfectly adequate. Thank you very much. I'll assign that to whoever picks up the challenge. Uh, Mark Selwood, uh, hello to you. He's out there saying, see you, Kevin. Or rather, in his case, isn't it? It's beautiful, isn't it, Kevin? Um, Mark's got a lovely video on uh, which has got the, um, uh, the what do you call them? The engine houses from Pole Dark. And he went and visited them the other day. It's, he's got a video on in the Bald Explorer. I was watching uh, it uh, with his drone. Um, I absolutely uh, flabbergasted that he's... <laughs> flying his drone over these uh, swelling waters uh, and no fear that his drone <laughs> will act, you know, will go <laughs> into the water. I would be absolutely petrified. Beautifully shot, uh, Mark, if I may say. It's, it's beautiful, isn't it, Richard? It's beautiful, um, your drone shots. But what was the most surprising is he, he was telling us about these engine houses in this new Pole Dark series and he's never watched it. He's never watched the series. <laughs> I thought, oh, sounds like sounds like me. Uh, I have actually, I did see the first series of Pole Dark, Winston Graham books. I read the books, actually. I read the uh, the first six or seven books of Winston Graham books. And I have to say, uh, the series, the first series, and I didn't, I did start to lose interest in the, both the books and the TV series after a while. I had other books to read, I suppose. Uh, but I do like, um, Winston Graham's work and he I've got some of his other books which are equally or if not more interesting but uh, anyway that was uh, that was that Michael Angel says never mind Stephen your back is worse than your bite uh, yes just read that uh, Stephen Ruff says I wish I had teeth to grind Michael uh, you don't want to grind oh wish you had teeth to grind my mum had dentures oh my goodness it was very comical when she'd forgotten to put them in and then she would come out for a meal we'd take her out say come on mum we'll take you out and <laughs> she didn't have her dentures in and you know these old people who don't have their dentures and the lower jaw just sort of just disappears into a basically a thin line with puffy <laughs> puffed out it's just as if it's collapsed it's like a hen sitting on an egg that's made of rubber that's just gone <laughs> like that 
It, to, bless her. Bless her. She was very put out when she went, oh, my goodness, I've forgotten my teeth. And, and often she would carry her teeth. She used to wear the most tattiest clothes. She was uh, usually um, under the influence of alcohol. But when she wasn't, uh, she was OK to get on with. And she used to wear these tatty clothes and she would fish into one of the pockets of some, you know, like um, a sports, like a, what do you call it? Uh, like like a hoodie, but the one with the zip at the front, um, whatever. Well, I suppose it is a hoodie. She'd wear that, but didn't have a hood, a tracksuit top type thing. And she'd like be searching and then out would come her teeth stuck to an old sugar sweet or some boiled sweet and dust and stuff. And she'd pull this all off and just stick it straight into her mouth. Oh, my. Uh, Ed Loud. Ed Loud. Are you still doing this? He's still doing this. It's very sensual, isn't it? I tell you what, if you could, if Ed Loud and I could do like this, two heads together. We could do an impression of Dolly Parton. It's an old joke, but it's uh, always fun. Anyway, Robin Marshall says drones do sometimes. They say there are quite a few rivers. There are, uh, there's quite a few in rivers and in places. Yeah, I bet I bet there is places where you can't get to the thing. And I wouldn't want to spend the sort of money on a drone that I know uh, Mark did and then have it drop out of the sky. But. Mark says, I've flown the drone long enough to overcome my fear of it plunging into the heart in a crumpled heap. Still get shaky flying it, though. Certainly doesn't look shaky. It looks, you know, incredibly still. Do you slow it down? Some of those images where you were going up there, I figured you must have slowed it down because it looked very good. Uh, Kevin Dramble says, I don't think I will get my hair cut until July. Oh, Kevin, I'll send you a Bic razor. Uh, Jeff says, uh, I was there every day when they filmed Goonies and I was there every day when they filmed Short Circuit and I never saw either. Oh, bless. I did like the film Short Circuit. I think that's the one. Short Circuit. Is that Johnny Five Comes Alive? Is that the one? Um, I, can't st <laughs> I can't stop doing that. It is very macabre running your hand over your skull, isn't it? Talking of skulls, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go into the cabinet of curiosity now because Barry and Faden are lovely, Lee, open, uh, lovely, Lee, are very kindly opening the lovely doors, the mysterious and macabre doors to the cabinet of curiosity. In the video box tonight. Over to you, Faden. Hello, um... Well, and welcome to Daddy's um, Cabinet of Curiosities. These are just some weird things, um, normally inspired by my interest in paganism um, and horror films. Um, we'll have a look through some of the things individually. And this is um, parts of the leg for the film Wicker Man. Yeah, this is parts of the... Um wood of the legs from the wicker man they built for the film of the same name in the 1970s um, we got it from burrow head in scotland when we camped there um, the wicker man is my favorite film of all time i love it this is um a very strange magnifying glass that i found at a car boot sale um, i thought it was quite unique and strange so i bought it it kind of looks Victorian. It does. I'm not sure how old it is or what it is, um, or what it was used for. Obviously a decorative thing. Um, anyway, I thought that might be interesting. Okay, this is a piece of charred wood um, that comes from the house, Beleskin House, on the shores of um, Loch Ness in Scotland. The house belonged to the notorious uh, Alistair Crowley, an occultist, um, a mountain climber, a world champion uh, chess player, Oh, an author and poet. Um, he was quite controversial in his time. I've become quite interested with his history and his workings. And these bits come off of the um, house that burnt down um, about five years ago. Um, I went to have a look at the ruins. Uh, this is a piece of slate that also came from the building, from the roof. Um, my girlfriend uh, just drew a portrait of the house on it and um, some of Alistair Crowley's philosophy on it. Um, you might find that interesting. 
Okay, this next one is a controversial one. I don't want you to think I'm a closet Nazi or anything, like the character from uh, Father Ted. Um, but this is something I saw online, someone selling it very cheap, and I thought it can't be genuine. Um, but I quickly phoned the person up. I went to their house, and they happened to be an elderly um, person, very elderly, um, selling it for 30 pounds. Um, uh, it looked like he was getting rid of some of his stuff, some of his memories, maybe. Um, I know British soldiers used to bring these uh, Hitler Youth knives back from Germany if they killed somebody. They'd take them back as like a morbid souvenir. Um, I've had it um, analysed by a proper historian and it is genuine. It's one of the rare ones. They normally have writing on them in German, something to do with God. Um, but this one was the rare ones where it wasn't printed. Um, but yeah, I just thought I might like show you that. It's oh, got yeah. history. The and there's the sheath cover made of leather and um, metal. Right, this is one that people normally hate. People are scared of it. Uh, it's a, a doll I saw in an antique shop in Odium where I live and it was sitting in the front window for months and months and nobody wanted it. Um, you can see why it's very creepy, very scary. Looks like something from a horror film, but I felt sorry for the poor chap. So my mother-in-law bought him for me for my birthday and we homed him and he now lives in the cabinet of curiosities. His name is Lambeth, by the way. Just don't think bad thoughts about him, he'll know. And this is something I bought from um, an occult shop in the New Forest <clears throat> in Burley. Um, it's just a skull with some Enochian magic uh, symbols on them. This is more comes from my interest in uh, horror movies. This is another one people don't like. Um, people think it's the devil, it's not. It's actually um, Baphomet. Um, it symbolizes as above, so below. As above, he's got his fingers pointing up, so below, his fingers pointing down. It represents balance. We've got male and female. He's a male figure, but he has um, breasts. Uh, basically light, dark, up, down, summer, winter, and them kind of things, and that's what that represents. I'll show you uh, this old holy bible from the Victorian era. It's got some lovely inscriptions inside. I love old books, especially old religious and occult books. I've got quite a few of them. And th this is an old bottle by R. White's. I'm not sure how old it is, but it has um, water from Loch Ness in it. And, uh, one of our many trips to Loch Ness brought some home. And these are basically, uh, I find this mushroom and the history, the Fly Agaric <coughs> mushroom, um, fascinating. It has quite a history. It's influenced quite a lot of things in culture, including books like Alice in Wonderland because of its hallucinogenic properties. Something very mystical about this mushroom. Um, anyway, we're going to leave it there. And um, I hope you don't find me too strange. But uh, that's like some of my interests. Anyway, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Uh, mushrooms, toads. Oh, hello. We're back, and the phone is ringing. Golly, let's find out who that is. Hello, and welcome to the Vogue Show. Hello, Richard. It's Richard here. Hello, Richard here. It's Richard here. <laughs> hello, Richard here. How are you doing? Over I'm there? I'm doing all right. Just bear with me one second, Richard. There, uh, Richard here. Uh, that, let me just uh, say thank you very much, Barry. That was really interesting. Your cabinet of curiosities uh, i particularly like the little bald fella that you <laughs> that was sitting in there that nobody bought um i thought that was uh, that was lovely so thank you for sending that a bit longer than we normally have but it was very interesting and interesting so if anybody's got another cupboard of curiosities do film them tell us about an item that you've got that you think might be interesting uh, anyway hello richard hello richard well, that's convenient you talk about that video because I had to ring up because of the Hitler Youth Knife. The Hit oh, the Hitler's Youth Hit Hitler Youth Knife. Hitler, Hitler Youth Knife, yes. I'm yeah. a bit of a, a knife collector. I haven't told many people about this, um, but I've got a bit of an interest in knife. Have you? Um, yes, yeah, so I can tell you a bit about this Hitler Youth Knife. And you're completely right, they were given to members of the Hitler Youth during the World War II era. Uh, the earlier models used to have etched into them the motto Blood and Ur, which stood for Blood and Honour. Blood and Honour? Yes, 
just what you want on a, a nice little group like that. For, and are given to very impressionable young boys. They were given as a, a memento for passing the exams. Gosh. Kind of like, here you go, you've done it. Yes. Um, get a bit like getting a driving licence when you pass your driving test, I guess. Yeah. That sort of thing. It's just that when you've got your driving licence, you can't really stab somebody in the back with it. No, but you can drive your car into somebody. That's very true. Although with a okay. knife, you could slash their tyres. Yes, yes. Gosh, it's a it's a it's a strange thing to give to uh, um, kids, isn't it? I mean, how old were the kids? Would the kids have been who'd have received this knife? They would have been teenagers, 14. possibly as young as ten. As young as um, ten. Yeah, yeah, um, and they also included girls. Gosh. So yeah, it wasn't just a male or an age. No, oh right, yeah. Them. Gosh. It was um, yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, I think he said he paid £30 for that knife, which is about the going rate. Oh, is so it? Have, been... Do you have any of those knives? I, I don't know. I won't have any of that, that insignia and that stigma attached to it, because I think it's it's curiosity. I've got nothing against that. I, just, I don't like seeing the whole thing that goes with it. No, well, that uh, absolutely fair enough. So tell me about the knives that you've got. Your your, your um, phone line is um a little bit muffled. Is it? That's better. You, you said this last time I called in, funnily enough. Yeah, no, it. Uh, I don't know whether it's how you hold the phone or uh, it's suddenly improved. Oh, I did just move it closer, so that might have been what it was. Yeah. So um yeah, yeah I, c- I couldn't hear. I said, uh, tell you about uh, the knives that you've got, and it went. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> right, well, I said I've got quite a few in my collection which are locked away and I don't really give a belt that much anymore. Um, in it, I've got three machetes. Three machetes? Three machetes, yeah. One of which I brought back from Honeymoon in St. Lucia. And I normally get asked how I got it back or through customs. And actually, there's never any problem bringing that back through customs, provided it's legal to have in this country. And that is legal to have in this country. And and you declared it, obviously. I didn't need to declare it because it's not a controlled or something that needs declaring. Oh, right. So you can come, you can freely come and go with a machete in your bag. As long as it's in the hold luggage, not in your carry-on. Yes, no, yes. Oh, okay, fair enough. So, yeah, you can hack somebody once you get to the country that you're aiming for, but not on the aeroplane. Not on the aeroplane. It's got to be under 18 inches and it hasn't, it's not allowed to be curved either. That's the rule. Oh, the, right. Oh, okay. With that. So, yeah. So, um, have you got a sam- samurai three. samurai sword? No, I don't have samurai swords. don't have anything like that. I'm more for the, the sort of knives you could carry when you're out camping or out in the wilderness. Uh, a lot of multi-tools, you know, sword away knives with pliers and tools attached onto them. Barry Stevens. Um, Barry Stevens just said uh, he was thinking about breaking into your garden shed to steal some cucumbers. He's having second thoughts now. Yeah, well, the chickens would be the first one to get door. They're probably more dangerous than the knives. Um, Michael Angel says, any fixed blade over three inches you can be nicked for? Uh, technically, yes. That's um, if you're carrying it without a reason. If, if you can actually carry it up to 18 inches if you have a reason to carry it. Uh, there has to be a justifiable reason. So you can't walk into a supermarket carrying a, a six-inch knife. It has to be you, you're going camping and you're going camping. Yes. Or you're, you're going out to work in the, the forest. Sorry, and, officer. Uh, uh, I, ha- I have got a reason for the knife. Oh, yes, sir. I'd yeah. like to hear that then. What is your reason? I'm going on a, a killing spree. Oh, there, that's all right. Long yeah. as you, long as you've got a reason got for a reason. it, got a reason. Yeah, that's a reason. Just don't carry it for no reason. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're my first victim, officer. Oh, that's marvellous. Shall I lay down and let you get to the jugular now? Make it easy for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that is the stupidity of the world at the same time. If you've got a reason, it's justified. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I must. Um, 
I must uh, must buy a knife then. <laughs> I've yeah. got a bread knife. I've got a bread knife, and um, well, I do use it for cutting bread. Well, funny enough, that's that's why that three inch wall it comes doesn't come into play because everybody has knives in their kitchen, and when you buy a knife, you've got to get it from your home or from the shop to yes. your kitchen. Yes, true. And if if you if you couldn't get it over three inches, how would you get it home? Well, uh, yeah, if it's uh, it's, it's doesn't they, they don't come in jigsaw pieces, do they? That you make them up because you might slice your fingers trying to put that. What kind of a jigsaw is that? That would be a Hitler jigsaw, that one, wouldn't it? Yeah, with the Hitler that's, youth. Um, that is very true. Anyway, listen, change the subject from knives to something nice. Um, you're doing this podcast on Friday, twenty four yeah. hours. Sorry, no, not a podcast. It's a live show like this. This old nonsense. Only yours is. About gardening. That's right, yes. And, and, and whatever yeah, else gone. happens after 2 a.m. in the morning will be interesting. <laughs> yes, we were going for a lot sort of agenda earlier today, and we figured between 2 and 5 we've got a spare, shall we say, in order to. I think what you should do is put. Um, Put the sh- put a portable version of the show into the van, drive to the allotment at two in the morning, stick up some lights, and start <laughs> weeding. Start weeding, because by five yeah. o'clock, God knows what you would have pulled out, but you probably left all the weeds. But it will make great content. Well, that that is that is a an option. If only I had a mobile studio. Oh, what? Well, yes, it's a shame. I can rent the SE to you. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you've got three charities. You're raising money for these different charities. Uh, what sort of charity? What do the, what is the kind of charities they're for? What do they ra- for gardening? People with no fingers and that sort of thing. Yeah, they're all gardening charity. The first one is called Green Fingers, which is a charity to get or build uh, gardens um, for children in places where children are in care or um, hospitals for children. They build gardens in these sort of places to cheer the children up. Right. That's the first charity. The second charity is Thrive, which is a garden charity for people with mental health disorders. Uh, Again, try and help those people out. And the final charity is Perennial. And Perennial is a charity that helps any gardeners that maybe struggling financially or falling onto bad times, it's there to help them out. But they must be busy now, then. They must be very busy, yeah. They yes. must be so, very uh, busy. So, yeah. and you're doing it, what, are you, you're doing it with Lee, aren't you? Uh, yes, Lee is doing it. And he's not, he's not going to be in the studio with you, presumably. You're going to be flicking between the two of you where he lives and where you live. Uh, no, what we have set up is the joint... Um, live stream like you did in with Julia. Yes, we sorry. I guess screen. that's what I guess that's what I meant, but you you're not actually in the same because of lockdown, studio. you're not in the same studio, but you're going to be yeah, split screen. This I guess that's what I meant. Um yeah. yeah. Oh, great. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's certainly yeah. worth uh, people looking into, uh, especially if they're interested in gardening and anything that can go wrong with gardens at two o'clock in the morning. Yes. Well, we, we've really had one problem because uh, one of our guests was going to be Monty's dog, Nigel, doing Monty Don's dog, Nigel, who you often see on Gardener's World. Oh, Monty Don, yeah. the famous gardener, his dog, That's it. Nigel. Yeah, his dog, Nigel, was going to be calling us. Unfortunately, he passed away last night, so we can't... You could have, have a seance. Could you have a seance? Could you get um, yeah. Could you get various carrots in a circle? And... Well, did... Or some bonios? Yeah, we did think that, but we wanted to some Possibly a bit too soon. Yeah, it was a bit soon. It was a bit soon. <laughs> I, I'm glad I didn't suggest that. I mean, I think that yeah. would have been in bad taste. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, maybe. Um, maybe who who else is who? There must be another gardener with a dog or an animal. Uh, Percy's thrower. Did what did Percy's? Oh, he's dead as well. Um, well, at least Monty <laughs> Don didn't die. That would have been a, a little bit more. So you can't get Monty Don to ring up then. Well, that's our challenge. We're going to try and have a challenge right throughout the 24 hours to get Monty Don to ring in. 
Yeah, I mean, he might still be in mourning. He might still be in mourning. But you can ring him early in the morning and say, well, you're in mourning. It is now 4am. We've got an hour to go. Oh, no, you finish at 5pm, don't you? But you could ring him in the... Anyway, whatever. I'll let you work it out. But that, So that's great. Well, good luck with that. Um, Thank you. Fingers crossed, and I'm, I will carry on plugging it until the cows come home and people turn up. Yes, well, we're, we're plugging it quite a bit in some of the various charities. And good man. What time, involved. says Barbara Charles, is this podcast start on Friday? 5pm, if I remember rightly. 5pm, yes. 5pm, British 5 summer PM. time. Which is summertime. Yeah. The reason we chose five is that when we finish at five the following Saturday, we've only got to stay up a couple of hours before going to bed. And you could go to bed. You could go to bed at, at five thirty, couldn't you? You could just, you know. In fact, you could actually go to bed at two a.m. and we could just watch you snoring. That's an idea. I didn't think of that. Yeah. See, I'm full of it. Yeah. And in fact, you could do the next feature for the next two hours is we're going to watch this plant germinate. That's an idea as well. Yeah. If you need, if you do need any uh, crazy ideas, then just ask. I'm full of them. Well, we need plenty of crazy ideas. We've there got we are. plenty of videos coming in as well. So excellent. Well, better move on. But thank you so much yeah. uh, for the call, Richard. Lovely to talk to you. And uh, thank Lovely you for telling us you. about your your uh, knife collection. You're most welcome. Knife to see you. <laughs> to see a knife. Yeah. Yeah, you too. Take, take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Yes, bye. There we are. That was the very knife Richard Suggett, who also is a champion kickboxer, apparently. Um, I've never asked him to kick me to find out, but there we go. How about that? Nigel Sadler says, I thought that would be up your street, Kevin. See what I did then? Uh, no. Uh, All Creatures uh, was mainly filmed in Askrig. And how can we donate to the charities, says Kevin Rambles. Um, what you have to do, obviously, Kevin, is put the £50 note in an envelope and address it to R. Vobes, uh, care of my address in Worthing. And I will obviously make sure it goes to a very good charity. Apparently there's a charity called the Bald Explorer who um, he makes some videos going about and desperate for cash. Um, Robin Marshall says, um, yes, I will. I went to the surgery, a real one, now, and a museum. No idea what people are talking about. Uh, Morton Lewis says, Richard and the lovely Julia and everybody, sorry I'm late, we were allowed out between 8pm and 11am here. Love you guys, but after two months of being shut in, I've had to exercise the old limbs. I'm not surprised. Um, You should have stayed out a bit longer. Um, what I want to know is, have they opened, they, I guess they haven't opened the cafes, all the lovely Spanish, uh, have they got the lovely, um, what do you call the girls, the, the girls with the clastinets that do the, the, uh, the flamenco dance, the flamenco dancers, have they got the flamen- flamenco, not flamenco, flamenco, what is it called? The, where they all of that. Are they allowed out? Have they been out, you know, in the bars doing... I don't know quite why they do this. This is a... I associate this with the uh, the clastinet. What are they called? Somebody must know. Um, uh, Sean Wiltshire says, uh, Hi, Obi... <laughs> Obi One-Eyed Kenobi. Hello to you, Sean Wiltshire. Lovely to see you. Thank you for coming by. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. To see you. Nice. Ernie says... Flamenco dancers. Yes, that flamenco dancers and flamenco dance. He says it a number of times. So does um, Ernie, who's another version of himself. And then, um, oh, maracas. Oh, yes, they've got the maracas. What did I call them? The clastinets, didn't I? They're maracas because they've gone crackers. Hola! And then they all go off to do a bit of bullfighting. Uh, do they still do bullfighting in Spain or has that been stopped now? Please don't do a Hungerford on us, Mr. Suggett, says Mark Selwood. I've actually been to Hungerford. Just so you know, at Christmas times, many, many, many Christmas, um, they do, they do, or they used to, they do a Victorian Christmas evening in Hungerford. And it usually goes off with a bang. uh, But we don't do that joke quite so often now. 
Uh, although that was a long time ago. That was about 25 years ago, wasn't it? That was about 25 years ago. Uh, Morton's uh, Clastonets Cast Castanule. Uh, it's Castanets on fingers, maracas held in the hand by hand. And what are the ones that you shake? Which are the ones that you shake? The the shakers. There's, there's the the what? The clastonets on the fingers, the maracas in the hand, and the whatever that is. They still do bull bullfighting in Spain. Oh, cool. I don't mean cool. I think it's probably very very sick. Uh, but um, it's funny, isn't it? Some of these traditions that they're like. You know, the other day I, I was reading, what was it? We were reading in the in one of the things about people making bowler hats in the 1930s. And it's still, people still believe that people in London walk around in a pinstripe suit with a bowler hat. Just as, you know, the it will be an enduring image of bullfighters in Spain. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy how these images just stay with us. You know, if you've got to put an image, if you wanted to put an image... Of on a on a website of a, an icon for a telephone, people still use a dial-up telephone as an icon for a telephone, and these same people who are doing it probably have never used, you know, are too young now to even have actually used a dial-up telephone, and nobody uses dial-up telephone, but very often you still see the dial-up telephone being used. As an icon, isn't it? Isn't it strange how these things they just stick? It's it's incredible. I don't know how I got a Spanish castanet, says Rick Gordon. Spanish ones, Spanish ones in Spain, and French ones in France. We we just have the coconuts, do we not? For horses, click 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 clop click clop. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, let's go into uh, into the Spanish world of the. Hello. No, no, wait, 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 stop. Hang on, wait, hang on. Stop that. Being silly. We went to fade and then by mistake, we went to fade out, not to fade in. Uh, right, we have, uh, we've had, uh, we've had Mr. Norris, we've had uh, Rick Gordon, we've had Barry. Let's, uh, we've got, and we've had, and we've also had Kevin. So there's only two to go. It's a toss up between Gabriel or Adrian. I can't remember who, who, I don't like to push, you know, the same people to the end. And this, these don't really come out in any specific order. Um, so let's go to, oh, I don't know. Um, well, it will start from, with the alphabet then. A for Adrian I've got here. So, okay. Adrian, then Gabriel. Sorry, Gabriel. Don't mean to push you to the end. Um, this is uh, our next part, our visit to Birmingham to find out more about the exciting world of Birmingham and its modernisation. Just remember, I'm still after a picture of Birmingham in the... Not uh, Coventry, like I said before, but Birmingham in the 1930s to see what it was like to compare it with. That would be interesting to see. But here it is, what it looks like now on an incredibly busy, rammed Saturday morning. Well, why aren't you playing, you swine? What have I not done? Well, welcome to the Boring Richard. These are the famous silver dots of Selfridges, right in the heart of the shopping district of Birmingham. This silhouette is St Martin's Church. This is what all the uh, people come for. That's the um, the boring there. You could drive along here at one point years ago. It used to be absolute. The old boring was a complete and utter dump. And that's the rotunda in the middle. Now converted into apartments. But you can see. What a transformation Birmingham's had over the last few years. Full of fancy restaurants. That's looking down towards the famous drug market and the outdoor food market. And that in silhouette, I don't know what you can see, you probably can see it. It's the Digbeth area of Birmingham, which is the Irish Quarter. Re original home of the Peaky Blinders. If you've ever watched the Peaky Blinders, that's where they used to hang around back in the 
18th and 19th century. This is amazing really for a Saturday morning. It's about 10 o'clock. It's 10 o'clock as I looked at the clock. And there's literally two or three people here. You would think on a Saturday morning this would be absolutely rammed with shoppers. I would never normally come to Birmingham on a Saturday. And look at it. It's just like a ghost town. There's more police than there is um, people. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my little mini tour of the Birmingham city centre. There's lots more to see. That's only two areas. We'll see you in the next video, Richard. There we are. Absolutely rammed. But with uh, police and obviously no nobody buying anything. Fantastic. Thank you, Adrian. <laughs> so interesting. So interesting. It is very clean. And one of the things I meant to say in the other one, when you said uh, it's all been cleaned up and it's all, you know, nice, I did think uh, without people in it, it looks quite sterile, doesn't it? Um, when it's all so modern. Excuse me. Um, when it's also modern, it does look a bit sterile. When it when there's nobody there, when it's got people in, suddenly it all comes alive. Um, so yeah, no, well done. They're very interesting, and and I guess as somebody who's lived in that area, you've seen the changes. Uh, fascinating stuff. Um, mm. So now, uh, Linda Kane, nineteen eighty seven, Hungerford, the Hungerford massacre. Um, that was dreadful, like so many of them. Um, and it's funny because until I actually went to Hungerford, I just kept hearing of this name and there was and then I got this job. Oh, I don't know, about 20 years ago now when I first went to Hungerford and I thought, oh, Hungerford, isn't that? Oh, yeah. Uh, watch out for the vo Vorpal Bunny, says Rita Loy. Yeah, we've got to be watch out for the, the Vorpal Bunny, whatever that is. Uh, Thanks for filming it. Lovely to see the cities getting a viewing, says Ed Loud. Um, Mike Dixon says, crikey. When we went to Birmingham, it was packed. You obviously, you went on the wrong day. Hello, it's Mike Dixon here in Birmingham with little Bella. Just thought I'd share share that with you. Little Bella in Birmingham. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Looking forward to the next uh, instalment of Mike Dixon in Birmingham. Um, hello, it's Mike Dixon in Coventry. <laughs> I wonder if you go to Coventry now, whether anyone will talk to you, because they are going to be doing their social distance, social being the apt word, in Coventry. I imagine they must have cracked that joke in Coventry so many times it hurts. Uh, Birmingham is a lot nicer now than it was years ago, says Turbo Streams. I have heard that. Um, I assume the bull ring is named after a real ring that was at one time attached to a bull that bullfighting took place in the market square. I ass I'm assuming that that is the case. Um, Turbo says, I will try and find an old picture. That that would be fantastic. Be interested to see that. Um, Mike Dixon says it was too windy. Hello. Hey! That's Bella. <laughs> Blown away. <laughs> Bless her. Bless her. Oh, dear. Oh, I know who it was who had his hair cut. Of course, it was you, Mike, wasn't it? That's right. You you had your good lady to cut your hair just after you'd had the shears on Bella. <laughs> if only if only Kevin had a pet. Eh? If only he had a pet, he could shave his pet and and then he could use his razors straight away. <laughs> All good fun. Uh, Marvellous stuff. Let's find out what has happened to Gabriel in Glastonbury. If you remember, he was um, looking at Clark's shoes last time, but he's out on a mission. Let's see where he is. Hi, and thanks for joining me on another Glastonbury Gabriel video. Um, today you find me in Cliss Hole, which is just outside Glastonbury, south of Weirial Hill, and it's a weir. And it's the point at which Glastonbury's mill stream leaves the River Brew, which I'm stood next to on my right here. Um, the, the mill stream originally was built in the 12th century um, and has many notable buildings on it and travels through what was Glastonbury's industrial area. So I'm going to follow the uh, mill stream from here where it leaves the brew to where it rejoins the brew out on the road back to Mia. So thank you for joining me, let's start the walk. 
So where am I today? Cliss Hold Weir, where the mill stream splits from the River Brew, is shown here by the red X. The blue line shows the course of the mill stream that we'll be following during this video. The red line shows the current day course of the River Brew further to the west. The green X shows the position of North Lobe Mill and the yellow X shows the site of Beckery Mill. And the town of Glastonbury can clearly be seen just to the east of our walk. The weir here at Cliss Hole is a popular spot with locals who like to come down here and dip in the water on a warm day, which is what today is. And this is the River Brew flowing off to the west of Glastonbury now. We'll rejoin that later. As can be seen here, the River Brew at this point is heavily man-made. It's straight as an arrow, runs across the fields, it arrives at this weir, does a quick left and a quick right and flows off towards the west of town. But it's this point here that we're very interested in. This is where the mill stream comes off. Uh, I'm still on a, a land bridge over it where the, the sluices are controlling it. But basically this is the start point. And look over here, beyond that tree, you'll see it carrying on where it heads off towards Northover. And that's where we're gonna go now. So now you can see behind me, the actual start of the mill stream here. And then it travels off that way towards Glastonbury. That's the southern slope of Weirill Hill you can see in front of you there. And these are the 12th century earthworks through which the mill stream flows at this point. So we've reached the first bridge since leaving the source of the mill stream back at Cliss Hole. This is the bridge that carries Roman Road towards the A39 and would have been an original road out of Glastonbury. So here we have the War Memorial which was set up to commemorate the dead from the two factories behind me. Um, they were the largest employers in town at the time and obviously many, many people lost their lives in that great conflict. Every year, after the main memorial service up at the Cenotaph in town, a delegation comes here and a second wreath laying takes place. He's so trendy, isn't he? He's so trendy, that Gabriel, with his, with his flat cap back to front on his head, his dark glasses and his stripy jacket. Oh, he's so trendy. I don't know how. I must look so square compared, I'm so square, compared to uh, Monsieur Le Trend uh, in Glastonbury. I wish I had, um, wish I had something that would make me a bit more, a bit more hip. If I had hips, I've had my hips surgically removed. Uh, I've got my, um, I've got my Harris Tweed jacket, I suppose. Um, I'm wearing it in tomorrow's show, in tomorrow's video. Uh, so that's something I do like my blue Harris too. It's got it's a it's a it's a beautiful blue. It's just a beautiful blue. Um, everything else is a strange, you know, the bald head, <laughs> what have you. But yes, there you go, G uh, Gabriel. Fantastic, lovely to see you out and about with your super sexy camera, and um, in your wonderful location. That was fascinating. Following the stream, I'm I'm thinking of doing a following some of the rivers in Sussex as part of my next uh, little project of going out. I can't really go terribly far because uh, on the news, they uh, yesterday I was uh, saying, oh, we can all go to work. Um, and apparently they've changed their tune. It's now from Wednesday. But he did say on Monday, as on Sunday, he said from tomorrow. Uh, but then later on today, apparently, Monsieur Le Boris, he changed his mind, said it's Wednesday. I don't know why Wednesday is, you know, what difference does the, the, the next couple of days make, or at least tomorrow. But um, so, but, but then the other thing they said, they clarified, you cannot go camping or staying overnight in camper vans, uh, which will preclude me at the moment from going in my car, uh, which is a bit of a nuisance because I thought I could do that. Um, but I, so I could still, you know, drive as far as I can in a day and come back. You can go any distance you like, apparently, as long as you go home at the end of it. 
how would they know? How would they know if you were, were dozing in your car? Anyway, um, so, yeah, rivers and things. I'm thinking of doing some of that. But that was Brill. Uh, all the videos were Brill. You guys are Brill. And thank you so much. It's um, been nice to see some more people just uh, sending in. You don't have to be a fantastic filmmaker in any means. You can just go out. This is how it all starts. You go out with your phone and just like Barry was doing, you know, you might have a favourite cup. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's, it's, you know, you, your personality you is what makes it interesting. You can just hold the phone and go, hi, Richard. This is my favourite cup. I use this cup every day I have a glass of a cup of tea. Uh, I've got it in a shop on the old Kent Road from a man with a very straggly long beard and earrings that used to go through his ears and have little budgerigars swinging on them that apparently he bought when he went out to the Middle East on a terrible holiday in Beirut when he was a freedom fighter as a young boy fighting off the enemy who were trying to murder him when he was getting on board a ship that had a list that was falling on one side that scuba divers had gone in now, James Bond underwater had been doing it whilst they were filming an episode of James. And, you know, just a simple little honest story like that is just the perfect thing. So there we go. Well done. Anyway, that's it for today. We'll be back again tomorrow, eight o'clock. Don't forget to join me. Um, if you are around in the daytime and you haven't gone back to work and you're a bit bored, we are, we are now reading I Saw Two Englands by... H.V. Morton, written in 1939. He's in Kent at the moment, uh, travelling around. It's quite, it's, I say, old chap, it's awfully 1940s, um, so it's quite an interesting read. That's at two o'clock in the afternoon on the, the Bald Explorer page, live, and then there'll be uh, a video in the morning and the Naked Englishman, as usual, to the patrons, and then this in the evening. So... I don't know what to do with myself half the time. Uh, anyway, until next time, thank you so much for watching. Look after yourself. Keep um, keep warm on these cold, wintry, bluey, blowy nights. And I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Press the button. <laughs> I want a... Can I have an... When it doesn't work, can I look a complete... Oh, there it is. And good night. <laughs>